thank all of you for being here this, this morning. I want to especially thank uh, Brian Lozano and the U.S. Army Band Pershing's Own Quartet for leading us with our national anthem this morning. I want to thank the members of the leadership, Mr. Schumer, Mr. McConnell, Mr. McCarthy for their beautiful remarks, and thanks Denny Hoyer, member of the leadership, for being with us, as others, other members of Congress from all over the country. I wanted to share some thoughts with you about this weekend. Over the weekend, we've had some sad observances of what happened that day. On Friday, we began here with Flight 93, with flight attendants and, um, and pilots talking about their friends who were on that flight that was destined for the Capitol, supposedly destined for the Capitol. Flight 93. As I think about everything we heard then, and in New York at, at Ground Zero uh, on, at the ceremony on Saturday, three is a, num a number that now I want us to remember so that we never forget. Flight 93 headed for the Capitol. Bravery, courage on that flight spared us that tragedy. In New York, 343 firefighters lost their lives. I'm not talking about other consequences following. I'm talking about 343 firefighters lost their lives that day. 31 members of the New York Police Department, 93, 343, 31. 13 of our young people in the last days of Afghanistan. So let the number three be a way for you to remember and never forget what happened. On Saturday, we heard speeches were, uh, presentations were only made by family members, which was beautiful and appropriate. We heard little grandchildren say, I never met you, Grandpa, but I know you're a guardian angel of me in heaven. People filled with faith. Moms talking about their children uh, looking like their dads or acting like their dads. The connection, the connection, so beautiful, but faith-filled because praying to them as they remembered them. Just comrades uh, on the battle, in the battle there, talking about their friends that they lost. Demonstrated faith in God, faith in each other, faith in America. It was a very, very, it has been a very unifying time, as it was right from the start with President Bush's beautiful remarks that day and this weekend, as well as President Obama. President Lincoln cautioned against the silent artillery of time. The, si the harsh artillery of time eroding our memory. Today and always, we renew our vow. Time shall not dim the memory of our fallen heroes. We pray that the years might ease the pain of the bereaved, but never the luster of the deeds of the fallen. When we visit the memories of September 11th, we tread on sacred ground. As we all know, 20 years ago, on that clear Tuesday morning, America was forever changed by an act of terrorism. In a moment, nearly 3,000 lives were taken, and the innocence of a generation was lost. Yet at our darkest moment, America showed the world our greatness. In the heroism of the first responders who rushed into danger, in the strength of strangers bonded by the loss, in the courage of a nation, that found unity in our agony. As Americans across the country mark this solemn day over the weekend, we recommit to our sacred promise to never forget both what we lost and the unity and strength that we found. May God bless the families of those who lost their loved ones, those who helped those families, and may God bless America. Now, 
I invite all of you to join us in a moment of silence. <clears throat> 